All right, y'all, I'm so excited because I get to hang out with my real-life good friend, Jamie Ivey. Jamie, thanks for being here. I'm so glad to be with you, Christy. This is so fun. Um, We were just talking even off camera. When you come to Nashville, it's like you are running and gunning, and you got so many things coming up. But this is a big trip for you because you're talking about your new book, You Be You. I'm so excited. Thank you. I'm so excited for it. Okay, so this is so perfect because we've been talking about this whole idea of knowing who you are. I've I've been harping on this. I've been trying to give women— just some some encouragement that you were created on purpose, you yeah. were created with a purpose, you were created perfect, you don't have to be someone else. And then here comes your book, and you're like, oh, allow me to dive in. So let's just start with why did you want to write this mm. book on this topic? Well, I love when I see messages collide. Yes. I'm like, oh, all of us are talking about the same thing. I think God is moving and doing right. something. And so I wanted to write this book because I started to hear and see a lot of women wishing they were somebody else. Like they had somebody else's gifts, they had somebody else's talents, they had somebody else's influence. And there's a really thin line of like, oh, I would like to maybe do what she does or, you know. Be inspired by that. Be inspired by her. But I saw women not just wanting to be inspired, they wanted to be her. Mm -hmm. And what problem that presents is that then you look at your own life, your own gifts, your own talents, your own influence, and it's almost like you're looking at God saying, I don't really think that you did a good job with me. You messed up. You messed up. I'm not as good as her. She's better. These gifts aren't as flashy. And so I want women to do exactly what you're saying, too, is I want them to believe that they matter. I want them to believe that they were created for a purpose right where they are with the gifts and talents that God gave them. Because I think when you start to believe that, you find satisfaction. You find success. Mm. Your life begins to matter when you can trust that God made you for a purpose. Mm, That's so good. And I think it's such a hard topic, too, because I think there's so many things that are at play here. So, like, for example, let's talk about kind of this balancing act. And I want to hear your thoughts on this between— I want to be content where I am. I want to be grateful for what I have. God made me the way that He did. I want to be content and ambitious. I Mm -hmm. want to be chasing goals and going for big dreams, and I want more things. So, how do you like? How do you? How do you help women balance that contentment and ambition? What's the healthy way to do that? It's so hard because you and I, and and I assume a lot of your viewers and listeners, we're go getters. Yes, we want to accomplish things. What's the next thing? We want to check things off our list. There's nothing wrong with that. I think it becomes an issue of our heart. When we no longer are thinking, I want to check things off and accomplish, when we start to think, these things I'm checking off, these things I'm accomplishing, they don't matter. They're not worth it. I only matter if I can check these things off. And I think that becomes difficult for our hearts to manage because then what happens is we become discontent. Because the only thing we think will satisfy us is if we have what she has. But here's the thing we find out throughout life is you get there eventually— and guess what? You never arrive. It's, you don't arrive. No. You're not satisfied. It's something else. It's it's something something else. else. And so for me, I've had to learn this the hard way of really trusting, okay, God, my voice, you gave it to me for a purpose. You gave it to me to use with the people that you put in front of me to influence. Yeah. I'm not going to have Christy Wright's voice. Yeah. And I'm not going to influence the people Christy Wright's influencing because God put you there. Yeah. And we can be women who cheer each other on in the places they've, they're going. And I have been more content in my life. Once I started to realize, oh, I can just be me. Yeah. I don't so have freeing. to be anybody else. Yes, it's yeah. so freeing because I can watch you and cheer for you and be so happy for you and then get back to my checklist right. and get back to my goals and like crush them. Yeah. Because I want to be me. I love what you're saying, too, because one of the the messages I love to really drive home with people is this idea of confidence. And mm-hmm. confidence isn't being self-centered. It's not being egotistical. It's like, no, just resting mm-hmm. in who you are and whose you are and who God made yeah. you to be. And so that's so much of what you're saying. Okay, I want to talk about uh, specifically when you are a hard driver, go-getter, right, like me and you, like a lot of people watching and listening— um, I, I used to think I had that figured out, right? Like, oh, my identity's not my productivity. Right. I'm totally fine with me if I don't perform, achieve, do, whatever. And then 2020. Yeah, right? And then the first few months, my calendar was cleared. I was doing nothing. And I had a little bit of an identity crisis going like, who am I outside mm-hmm. of what I do? Yes. So how? what's the secret to that? What's the, when, our, when our schedules are filling back up, and they are gradually, what is the secret to staying rooted in your identity, mm-hmm. apart from your productivity, apart from all of your achievements and accomplishments, like keeping that healthy separation when, man, the reward, the world rewards that. Yes. It rewards that activity and yeah. achievement. So how yeah. do you help people stay rooted? It's so hard because I had the same experience. Everything starts canceling and I'm like, 
who am I? And what do I do? House projects. I'll take on some house projects. Yeah. Like all of a sudden I'm like, I guess I'm going to like cook dinner every night or something. I don't know. What a concept. Yeah. Yeah. So that was so hard for me, but I think it's been a really good wake up for some of us because here's what happened is that identity that was pulled out from you and I and a lot of people with work and what they do, that is going to come back. Like we're going to keep working. Right. What it showed me is what about some things that might be harder? Like what if I build my identity on my family? And then something, God forbid, something happens. Where am I left? You know, or if I build my identity on the house that I live in and then something happens. And so it was just a little bit of a wake up call, I think, for a lot of people to go, there is this real truth to building our identity on something that cannot ever leave us. You know, it's like when Jesus talks about, and he's like, build your house on the rock. He said, the storms will come, the wind will come to both houses but they were built on different foundations. Yeah. And that feels kind of like a churchy thing to talk about 2020, but it's really true. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, everyone has walked through the storm and the wind. Uh, I had a friend say the other day, she said, we've all been through the same storm. We're just in different boats. And our boats mm. look different about what it's affected us. But at the end of the day, I want to make sure when the storm comes, again, whether that be personal or financial or professional, man, where's my foundation? Yeah. Because if that falls... I mean, what do we have? Yeah. You know? And so for me, it means thinking through my identity can be found in nothing else besides Jesus. Mm. And that also sounds very churchy. And let me tell you, I don't think either one of us have arrived at feeling like no. we have <laughs> like we have this figured out every right. day. But it's something that we work on. It's yeah. something that we every day commit to the Lord and ask Him to show us yeah. and reveal us because He will, because He wants our hearts. Right. You know, He wants that. So yeah. I trust Him with that. But it's hard work, and I yeah. think it's intentional. So that's why maybe I've learned is that you can't just flippantly have your whole foundation. You have to work on that. Yeah. And that's what I think we've learned in 2020. Yeah, for sure. I love the um, worship song. You're a good, good father. That's who you are. That's who you are. And I'm loved by you. Mm. That's who I am. And I remember I was worshiping one day. This was years ago. And I felt the Lord just whisper, what if your soul identity, what if every ounce of who you know yourself to be was completely derived from that, Mm. that you are loved by me? And it's like, that sounds so good. And like you said, so hard to remember. Okay, so let's let's talk a little bit about our thoughts because you said, you know, the way that we think. Sometimes, Jamie, I'll just be minding my own business putting on my makeup. I'm having a great day. I've had my coffee. I'm feeling good. I am loved by God. And then there's like these voices that'll just enter. It's like, well, if you were a really good mom, Mm -hmm. you would fill in the blank. Or if you, um, you know, if you really were successful, you would have a house that looks Mm -hmm. like that. And there's these, and I'm like, where did this come from? These are not even genuinely my thoughts, Jamie. And so how do we combat this onslaught of the internal thoughts, Mm -hmm. the voice of the enemy, but also external comparison, social Mm -hmm. media, pressure, criticism, because even if we work really hard to to build our house on the rock, gosh, those storms seem like they're unending. So kind of help us, help us. It's a, like you said, it's a daily thing. Help us like with maybe some rhythms or some habits to to be able to to combat that and guard against it. Well, I think two things come to mind. The first is that you just said it out loud. And a lot of times we hear these things and we internalize them, but we don't ever talk about these things with our girlfriends. Mm. And so I have a set of friends that I can say just like the worst thing out loud to, anything to, and they're not going to look at me and be like, Right. You should get yourself together, you know? Yeah. They're going to look at me and say, like, okay, why do you think that's coming? What have you been doing? Have you been in God's Word? And then they're going to tell me truths. And so that's number one is have this community where you can say out loud these yeah. things. Um, and the second thing is I have to sometimes watch what I'm inputting into myself. Mm-hmm. And I am a, a lover of Instagram. Mm-hmm. I love the Instagram. Same. It is so fun. It seems like a nice, happy place to hang out. Sure. But the thing that Instagram does for me that I have to battle is those thoughts that you just have. It puts things in like, I wonder why I wasn't invited to that. Or look at the success she's having. Or, gosh, her family, they always seem happy. Is anyone upset (laughs) at their house ever? Do their kids ever act out? I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. And so what I've had to really learn and really choose to look at Instagram in a different way is that we're not seeing all the true story. Sure. Um, And that's true because you and I both have things in our life that we've we've never seen the light of day on Instagram. Right. And they never will because they're personal. They're with our families, with our communities. And so I have to continually remind myself that real life, this real life that I think I'm seeing, it actually doesn't exist. Yeah. And real life is lived within my home, with yeah. my people. And so community— And then realizing that what you're putting in, what you're looking at all day long, it actually affects those things that you're trying to fight in the morning when you're drinking your coffee and you're like, where did that come from? Well, maybe it came from two days ago when you found yourself looking at someone's profile for a little bit longer because you just wondered, 
how does she get to do all of that stuff? Yeah. Or how does she get those opportunities? Or yeah. how does she keep having babies and I can't have any babies? I yeah. mean, you know, we, we look at it. Right. And so I think we have to know our own heart because what you struggle with is not going to be the same with what I struggle with. Right. And so there's this confession to yeah. our friends and to the Lord and saying, here's what I'm confessing that I'm going to struggle with. Yeah. I mean, show me how I can guard my heart. Because yeah. I want to guard my heart yeah. so that I can battle those thoughts. Because they're going to come. Yeah. But I want to battle them better. Yeah, that's so good. And it's such a good reminder, too, because I think even you saying what you just said of the things that I struggle with or the thoughts that enter my mind, there are people watching and listening that would think you never think that. Oh, They goodness. would think that, well, Jamie Ivey doesn't struggle with that right. or Christy Wright doesn't struggle with that or— Beth Moore, whoever, fill in the blank yeah. with people that you think, oh gosh, they seem like they have it all together. They're spiritual enough, Christian enough, successful enough, whatever it is. And what's amazing is none of us are immune to no. it. None of us are immune to um, the the temptation of comparison, the temptation of envy, the temptation of um, discontentment, you know? And, and I think that's such a great reminder that we all struggle with it. And to your point, I think it's really good to show the other side of the Instagram story because I would say— you're exactly right. There are things I don't post on Instagram. And some of it is very, very intentional, not because I'm ashamed that I don't want people to know. There's certainly that side of it. But I look at my kids and I'm going, gosh, we're the first generation of parents raising children on social media where they have a digital footprint forever that they have no say in. Yeah. So while it's totally fine if some people want to post pictures of their kids with spaghetti on their face, throwing a temper tantrum in Target, or in the bathtub, yeah. I'm not going to do it yeah. because I'm like, Mary Grace doesn't get a say yeah. on what. Mm -hmm. So for me, some of it is protecting those tantrums, though, trust me, they happen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it gives the impression that my kids are perfect. Mm -hmm. And that is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like, that is simply because not true. Because everyone actually is struggling with the same things. Yeah. I mean, like you said, that you would say, well, she must not struggle with that. Once you get down, all of us, we have this broken nature. Yeah. Like we all want to be known and loved. And you and I both know that we can get that through Jesus. Yeah. And we still have to fight that all the time to really know that you are a good, good father. And what if that's all I had? Right. Like that is something that we have to fight all the time. And everyone's fighting that same yeah. battle. Yeah. Okay. I've got, I've got kind of a hard question, but I know you can handle it. So this is one of those things that I feel like there's such a empowering message of freedom to be you. Mm -hmm. What about the woman that is listening to that and she goes, I don't want to be me. Mm. I don't like my life. Yeah. I'm, um, I don't have any gifts or I don't like my gifts or kind of that. It's just, she's just, life has got her down yeah. for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. She's just down. And, yeah. and she's like, I don't like my situation. I'm in a really hard situation. Maybe she's going through a really hard season, a couple hard years. How would you encourage her with this hope at the same time of empowering yeah. to be her, yeah. you know? First, I would say I'm sorry. Yeah. And I would say that you're not alone. Yeah. Um, I have had seasons of my life of feeling those exact feelings of, I just thought there was going to be more to this, God, mm -hmm. and this is not what I thought mm -hmm. life was going to be like. Is this as good as it gets? Is this as good yeah. as it gets? And so I get that, and I understand that. Um, but I would want to encourage her to really, really dive into two things, community and the Word. Mm -hmm. um, find a community. And again, that is also so very difficult. It's yeah. so hard. Um, the best place I find that people can find community is by serving in a local church. Mm -hmm. Once you, when you're serving on a team side yeah. by side with yeah. someone, all of a sudden you're like, ah, I like you. Yeah. We're serving with the same mission. And so try to really find a community because I think that helps us because when we're isolated, we start to believe all the lies about oh ourselves. Oh my gosh, And yes. they come like daggers we all the time. We accept them as truth. Yes. We don't even question them like no. you said. Yeah. So find that community that can pour into you and that you can be vulnerable with and then be in the Word. And again, it's also so very hard because yeah. you're like, I don't think God has anything to tell me and I don't understand this and this is difficult. Yeah. But his word is also true that it says that it will not come back void. Yeah. And so spend time with God. Find worship music. Find a church home. Spend time in the word. Because what I found is when I was in those seasons of feeling like, is this as good as it gets? Yeah. Is this all there is? I think I have more in me, God. Right. Is when I was not actually trusting that God was for me. Mm. I wasn't trusting that He was with me in the here and now, in the season that felt never-ending, in the season that felt like is this all I do is change diapers and watch Elmo <laughs> I mean, and cut up bananas? I mean, how many more bananas can we eat in one how day? How many goldfish can be crunched in the bottom of my car? Yes, I just need to yes. know. And so I remember feeling that season of like, I don't think I'm going to enjoy this motherhood thing. Yeah. Um, and it was community and it was God's Word that, that got me through that. Yeah, I love that reminder. I found when I'm going through those wilderness seasons, and like you said, everybody experiences them differently. God takes you through different things. Um, I remember in the, some of those seasons specifically, it was so clear that God had me there. Mm. And it's very easy to, uh, I feel like, attribute 
qualities to God and say, well, God, are you mean? Have you forgotten me? Are you mad at me? Because we're just looking for an emergency exit. But I love this reminder of like, God can do things in you in that season. God And and being rooted in local church, being connected in community, they can speak that life over you even if you're going through a really really tough storm. It's true. I was just talking with a friend yesterday and she said that there's this concept that we talk about a lot that's like waiting well, like wait well. And she— I I don't. I don't wait well, Jamie. Well, she flipped the script on me a little bit. She's like, I don't know if I need to wait well. I think I need to actually like cert, like live my life right here. Okay. Because a lot of times we're in different seasons and we're like, I'm just gonna, I'm wait, gonna, I'm wait gonna till wait till the next one. I'm gonna wait till I find a husband. Wait till I graduate college. Wait till I have a kid. Wait, fill in the blank. And so we find ourselves in those seasons, going, I guess I'll just get through this, right. you know. And she was like, well, what if we like thought that that season was purposeful? Yes. Like, what if we believed that God had something for us in that season? So it's not just like— And live in that season. Yes. It's not like I'm just going to wait until I get married or wait until right. I get a degree or wait until my business takes off. What if I actually lived purposeful, yeah. fruitful life right here where I was? And that was really encouraging to me, and I hope that encourages someone. I love that reminder. And it's funny because last summer I did research. I was on the phone with women. It didn't matter the woman's age, the family, married or not, work, business, doesn't matter. Every single one of them said these words. They say, well, when things slow down. Mm. Well, when things slow down, I'm going to yeah. start that business. When things slow down, I'm going to take care of myself. When things slow down, I'll read the Bible. Whatever. Right. And it was like— They went from season to season to season because some people are thinking that right now. They're in the thick of the fall. They're like, when things slow down, let me tell you, sister, Christmas is coming, (laughs) and it's going to be a different kind of busy. And then it's January, which is a different kind of busy. And so there's such— I love that challenge and that invitation to live right where you are, whether it's crazy busy or super slow or not the season you want. Yeah. But that you can live there. I love love that reminder. Trust God in that. Yeah. Okay. um, So we talked about kind of the idea of contentment. And this um, not an unhealthy desire to be ambitious. What is what does growth actually look like when you think about like you know we're goals people. So what does it look like to be who you are and then set goals? Because here's one of the things I've noticed with women I work with, Jamie, and I've been guilty of doing this myself. Sometimes we're not sure what goals to set. Mm. We're not sure how or where to grow, yeah. and so we're going like, oh well. She's reading 30 books this year. I guess I should read 30 books. Right. She's cooking every night. I guess I should become a chef. Like yeah. we kind of look to others to set goals and get ideas for what should be next for us. Yeah. And sometimes that's wrong yeah. because, again, we're doing what you're saying. We're kind of chasing her version of success, yeah. and we're trying to grow like she's growing. What's a good way for us to figure out, okay, God, how do you want to inform or direct me in what's next yeah. for me? Yeah. Because what's next for me is going to be different than what's next for someone else. What does so that look like? different. And again, it's hard because there is this idea of like, oh, I like that practice that she's implemented into her business. I'm going to learn from her. Right. That is great. Sure. I do that. You do that. We sure. all do that. It's great. But there is this idea of what does it mean for me to be a successful whatever it is. And I've kind of had this thought over the last couple of years, and I've learned the hard way of chasing success. Um, and again, it's kind of blurry because I want to be successful. Like, I want my podcast, my book. I want everything. My parenting, my marriage, want to be successful. But what I found is that the world's standard of success is constantly moving. It's like Mm. this moving target. That's a good, yeah. And so I'm like, once I think I'm on the target, it's moved. And I'm like, wait. I I almost had it, and it's gone. It's almost successful, and now this is success? (laughs) So that was this idea. I started feeling like I can never meet it. I can't meet your idea of success. I can't meet the world's idea of success. And I was trying so hard— failing every time, coming so close. Or maybe I hit it. And then I was like, oh, I've done it. I've done what they said is successful. I don't feel satisfied. Mm. I feel the same. And I feel like I've got to keep going. And so for me personally, I thought, what if I changed my viewpoint just a little bit? And I thought, instead of chasing whatever success might look like, what if I said, I'm going to be faithful? I'm going to be faithful to what God has asked me to do. And so as a parent, success to me would be, All of my kids graduate high school. They head off to college. They get great jobs. They love Jesus. They marry amazing people that I love, and they make beautiful grandbabies, and we all vacation (laughs) five times a year. Okay? Success. I love it. Me too. I wish it would happen. Yeah, yeah. But what if that doesn't happen? Yeah. Then am I a failure as a parent? And so for me, I had to say, what if I chase faithfulness? I'm going to faithfully love my kids every day. I'm going to faithfully tell them about you, God. And then I'm going to let whatever happens, happens. Mm, That's good. And in my business, I'm going to make goals. And I'm going to try to achieve them as best as I can. But I'm going to focus on being faithful to what you've asked me to do. And at some point, that means I have to say no to things. I have to say yes to things. I have to sacrifice. But I have to know that's what I'm doing Mm -hmm. and not what anyone else says. Because if I try to be the success that she is, 
I'll never actually be it. Yeah. And let's say I do be it. I'm not going to be satisfied yeah. because I'm not faithful to what God asked me to do. Yeah. So you can fill in the blank in anything, parenting, marriage, your job, your community, your school. I really want us to be women who are striving to be faithful to God. Yeah. And I think that when we do that, your own success will come and yeah. satisfaction, you'll find satisfaction. Yeah. I love how you redefine success because it's almost like it goes from this moving target to you look up, you're like, oh, I am. I am. As I choose to be faithful, I actually am successful yes. by that definition. Yes. And, and I it's love that. different for everybody. Yeah. Like there's no way we can say this equals a successful right. woman. Right. Well, that it just can't, that can't be measured. Right. You know, because that's going to be different for everybody. And yeah. so I think that, like you said, when we look up and go, I am being successful yeah. because I'm being faithful to what God's asked me to do. I love that. I love just how you turn that on its head because even the idea of faithfulness feels so attainable, so tangible, so much less intimidating than it's success. It's personal. Yeah. yeah. And it's it's so much like what your um, subtitle of your book, Why Satisfaction and Success Are Closer Than You Think. It's like, yeah. Yeah. That, that feels mm-hmm. right. Oh, Jamie, this is so, so good. I'm so excited Thank for your you. book. I'm so excited that you're talking about this because I know it's a message that is so freeing and so empowering to women that feel stuck. They feel defeated. They feel insecure. And you're going, oh, no, no, no. Like, look up. Let me show you right where you are and what God has for you. Thank it's you. so good. I know people want to know where they can get it and where they can follow you. So well, come find me on Instagram. I love yes. Instagram at Jamie Ivy, And then my webpage is jamieivy.com. And then you can find everything about the book there, everything about anything else, the podcast, it's all there. I love it. You are amazing. Thanks for being here. Thanks for hanging out with us.